All right, engineers, today in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about oxytocin. All right, so oxytocin, we know was actually produced, right, by the posterior pituitary gland. By what nucleus? If you guys remember very, very specifically, if we look into the hypothalamus just really, really quickly, we remember that the hypothalamus has those specific neurons that are releasing what? Oxytocin, right? And oxytocin, if you guys remember, what was the nucleus that was secreting this? That was the paraventricular nucleus, okay? All right, so oxytocin, when it's actually released, we actually said, what were the things that are driving it? What are the things that are stimulating? Well, we said one thing was the birthing process. So specifically, what's happening in the birthing process? So let's say here I have a baby. So let's say here is my actual baby that I'm trying to be able to uh, give birth to here. It's ready to come out into the world, okay? But what is it doing? All right, so what it's starting to do here is, is it's starting to stretch the actual cervix of the uterus, right? Let's give him about a couple hairs there, right? So he's beginning to stretch the cervix of the uterus. As he's stretching the cervix of the uterus, it's activating specific stretch receptors that are located within the certain layers of the uterus. So let's say here for specifically, I activate some type of stretch receptor. That stretch receptor, what is it gonna do? It's gonna send these signals who? To who? The hypothalamus. When the hypothalamus gets that signal from the stretch receptors, it's gonna tell the hypothalamus to activate the paraventricular nucleus to secrete the already preformed oxytocin. What's the oxytocin gonna do? The oxytocin is actually gonna come right in here and bind on to a specific receptor on what cells and on what layer of the uterus. Okay, so I drew here just a quick <clears throat> uh, anatomical histological diagram real quick. So here's your uterus, right? So you got the fundus of the uterus, you got the body of the uterus, you got the cervix of the uterus, and here's the vaginal sheath. Over here's the fallopian tubes with the fembrae. And technically, if I wanted to continue to be anatomically correct, you have the ovaries right here. Then in this blue layer here, this whole blue layer here, that is the endometrium. It's the inner lining of the uterus. This actual red layer here with these smooth muscle cells, that is actually gonna be called the myometrium, okay? So it's the middle muscular layer. And this green layer on the outside is called the perimetrium. We're looking specifically at the myometrium. So what I did is I zoomed in on a smooth muscle cell. Oxytocin is gonna come and actually bind onto this specific receptor here. When it binds onto this receptor, it works through a specific pathway. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about it real quick. We're gonna fly through this one, okay? Because the mechanism isn't superiorly important, it's the overall effect. But let's just, that way we understand what I'm talking about. So oxytocin binds onto this receptor. When it binds onto this receptor, it activates a GQ protein. GQ comes and activates another protein located on the membrane. This is an effector enzyme. That effector enzyme is actually called phospholipase C. Phospholipase C will actually break down another component of the membrane. So let's say here's a, a lipid component of the membrane. This lipid component is called PIP2, which stands for phospho and acetyl uh, diphosphate. Phospholipase C will actually break down this PIP2 into two components. What are those two components? One is actually called DAG, which stands for diacylglycerol, and the other one is IP3. Well, smooth muscle cells have a little bit of smooth endoplasm, I'm sorry, what's called sarcoplasmic reticulum. So they have a little bit of sarcoplasmic reticulum, but they also have these things called calveoli also, which are also a little calcium storage. IP3 will come over here and activate this sarcoplasmic reticulum or this calveoli and do what? push calcium out here into the sarcoplasm. What's the DAG gonna do? The DAG is gonna come activate another protein kinase, and this protein kinase is called protein kinase. This one is specifically C. And protein kinase C will go and phosphorylate a whole bunch of different proteins. Maybe it'll phosphorylate proteins on the cell membrane specifically to allow for calcium entry. So maybe calcium is actually gonna enter in from the extracellular space. So what am I basically doing? What's the whole purpose of this? I'm increasing what? The intracellular volume of calcium. So the intracellular concentration of calcium is going up. What's that gonna do to this muscle cell? It's gonna enhance the contraction process. So the overall effect of oxytocin, we can say is, 
increasing intracellular calcium levels. If you increase intracellular calcium levels, you're gonna increase contraction. And if you increase contraction, what is that gonna help to do? It's gonna increase the expulsive uterine contractions for the birthing process to push the actual baby out, okay? So again, one more time real quickly, stretching of the cervix of the uterus, activate stretch receptors, signals the hypothalamus to produce oxytocin. Oxytocin comes, binds onto this receptor of what cell? A smooth muscle cell located within the myometrium works through a PIP2 calcium signaling mechanism and the overall effect is to increase the intracellular calcium levels. Increasing the intracellular calcium levels increases contraction because what happens is this calcium will actually activate what's called calmodulin and calmodulin will activate your actual myosin heads by activating a light chain kinase, okay? So again, we're increasing the contraction to push the baby out. All right, so that's that. What about for this? If we look over here, we have a mammary gland. So we have the breast, right, with these. If you look here, this blue right here, this is actually gonna be, the blue part is gonna be the alveolar cells. That's where we're making all of this actual milk. So this is alveolar glands. And these are just my lactiferous ducts. And this would be my lactiferous sinus, and then that's the nipple. And then around it, you'd have the areola, right? So what's the trigger for this one? If you remember, the baby has to be suckling. So the baby has to be suckling on the nipple. And that suckling of the nipple will activate specific types of mechanoreceptors, which basically pick up different types of tactile or touch or certain types of, of forceful stimuli, which is induced by the suckling. When that occurs, what happens? Let's say here we have these mechanoreceptors. They pick up that signal and what do they do? They send it to the hypothalamus. When they stimulate the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus will then do what? It'll trigger the release of oxytocin. Oxytocin, when released, what is it gonna go and do? All right, so if you look here, you see these, these actual cells right here, these or, I'm sorry, these uh, red cells here? These red cells are called myoepithelial cells. And what happens is they're surrounding basically these glands. So we already have milk. So if I were to draw here in blue, there's already milk actually sitting within these glands. It's already been formed because prolactin has been secreted. It's been acting on these uh, glands to produce the milk. So the milk is ready to be uh, ejected. But what has to happen is oxytocin has to come and act on those myoepithelial cells. So let's draw here in uh, green here. Let's show this actual oxytocin coming in and acting on one of these myoepithelial cells. What is he gonna do? the PIP2 calcium signaling mechanism. So again, what's the overall effect of that? The overall effect of oxytocin is gonna increase the intracellular calcium levels within the cell. As it increases the intracellular calcium levels within the cell, it's gonna enhance the contractile processes. And when it causes contraction, it's gonna squeeze on these ducts, and then what's it gonna do? It's going to eject the milk out. So what is that called? It's called the milk letdown reflex okay so again suckling of the actual nipple activates mechanoreceptors the mechanoreceptors due to the baby suckling will activate the hypothalamus the hypothalamus will then trigger the release of oxytocin oxytocin will stimulate the myoepithelial cells to undergo contraction by increasing the calcium levels and activating the actual cross bridges, or for this case, uh, it might be activating the calmodulin kinases and activating the myosin heads to undergo contraction. If you increase the contraction, it's gonna cause the ejection of the milk. Therefore, these blue things are representing the milk, right? So that is the milk being ejected into the baby, right? So into the baby's or oral cavity. And again, what is that process called? It's called the milk letdown reflex. We could go over other things, but it's gonna be the same concept. For example, whenever the male is undergoing the actual sexual orgasmic response, when it's, he's getting ready to ejaculate, the oxytocin is working on the vas deferens to cause it to contract, to move the actual sperm up through the entire male urogenital or actual reproductive tract, okay? One more thing I wanna mention for the oxytocin, and that's gonna be, we'll, we'll mention upper high levels and low levels, is it's also associated with love and compassion and uh, emotional uh, uh, aspects of it too. So they actually call it the cuddle hormone. So it's also associated with love and compassion and, and certain types of emotional feelings. So uh, someone who might have elevated oxytocin levels, they might be exhibiting a little bit more of love and compassion-like feelings, okay? So again, 
We'll wrapping up oxytocin and we'll talk about what happens if there is any hyposecretion, hypersecretion. We know that oxytocin is important whenever there is stretching of the cervix of the uterus, which causes expulsive uterine contractions whenever it gets released by increasing calcium and increasing contraction. Whenever the baby is suckling, it activates the actual mechanoreceptors around the areola and then that sends signals to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus released oxytocin and caused the myoepithelial cells to contract, which caused the milk letdown reflex or ejection of the milk. And we also know that it also controls the actual male sexual orgasm response by causing contract contraction of the vas deferens to expel the actual semen out through the male genital tract. And we know that it also is important with certain types of emotions like love and compassion. One more thing and we're done here. There isn't too um, very many, they're very rare to find anything that causes elevated. So we can actually define this in two ways. We can say here like this. We can say there's what's called hyper secretion and we're gonna try to do these every video here. Hyper secretion and hypo secretion. So what are meant by these two terms? Because we're gonna use this over and over again. Hypersecretion means that you're making too much oxytocin. Hyposecretion means that you're not making enough oxytocin. So if there's a certain baseline, if you're making below that, that's hyposecretion. If there's a certain baseline again and you go above that, that is hypersecretion. Now, hypersecretion is not very common, okay? It's not a very common condition to, to see this, but if you could imagine, there is an example of where we can actually do this during the birthing process. Let's say that you give the individual, so whenever the female is actually undergoing her uterine contractions during the birthing process, she might need a little bit more assistance to be able to push the actual, fe the actual fetus out. So they can give the individual what's called Pitocin. And Pitocin is just basically a synthetic form of oxytocin. And what is it gonna do? It's gonna increase those intra, I'm sorry, increase the actual uterine contractions. And if it increases the uterine contractions, it's gonna get help to be able to push the actual fetus out. So that's one example. There isn't too many common causes of uh, elevated oxytocin levels. But if you could imagine, it could do, imagine what it's normally doing, it's just increasing that response. So what it would actually cause undesirable, increased contractions of the actual uterus, it might cause increased milk ejections, it might cause uh, increased uh, contractions for the actual male uterine genital tract, um, and it can increase the actual feelings for love and compassion and um, basic emotions like that. Hyposecretion, also not too common also, but can occur. Sometimes what can happen is if there is low oxytocin levels, it can produce a condition called what's called uterine inertia. And basically, if they're not being able to make enough oxytocin, the actual female won't be able to have very strong contractions to be able to push the actual fetus out. And if they can't do that, they're gonna have a heck of a time being able to push the actual fetus out whenever it's going through the birthing process. So uterine inertia can occur because of uh, low oxytocin levels. Not too common, another one, uh, it can happen, but very, very uh, uncommon, is there's blood vessels. Uh, whenever a, a female is actually giving birth, sometimes, rarely can it happen, but there can be a postpartum hemorrhaging process where the blood vessels in the act going from the hypothalamus to the pituitary is actually affected and the actual tissue cells don't get enough blood supply. And so sometimes the cells that are making the actual nuclei that are making the oxytocin, they die off and they don't make enough oxytocin. And that can also happen too. So sometimes there can be hyposecretion due to postpartum hemorrhaging. But like I said, it's, it's not very common. It is more common in the anterior pituitary because uh, the hypophyseal portal system is an individual portal system, very low pressure. So it's more common within the anterior pituitary as compared to the posterior pituitary. But again, there is a chance of it happening, just not very likely. Okay, so again, hyposecretion, hyper, I'm sorry, hypersecretion, we could say it could be due to Pitocin. Giving the actual woman this Pitocin would help to increase the expulsive uterine contractions during the birthing process. And hyposecretion, whenever there's really low levels of oxytocin, it can produce what's called uterine inertia, where the mother isn't able to have very powerful contractions and it's a struggle to be able to get the fetus out. And again, very, very not too common, very rare, is that there could be postpartum hemorrhaging that could affect the blood supply to the hypothalamus, specifically the paraventricular nuclei, and uh, cause a decrease in the amount of oxytocin produced. But again, less common, more common in the anterior pituitary gland, okay? All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps up with oxytocin. In the next video, we'll talk about ADH.